Ukraine's president addresses the European Parliament in a special session on the ongoing crisis, looking at what more the EU can do. At least 11 civilians killed as Russia bombards Ukraine's second largest city. A huge military convoy is also closing in on capital Kyiv. Our well, conflict in Ukraine is not just being fought on the ground. The internet is also on the front line where digital warfare is being waged. Escalating cyber attacks have been reported with fears of more still to come. From all this, we're joined by Yi Hao Lim, the head of intelligence at APEC Mandiant. Uh, Mr Lim, Russia is a past master of hybrid warfare, which includes cyber attacks and disinformation campaigns. This current assault on Ukraine on the ground is spawning a whole new level of attack online in terms of software and strategy. Are you seeing this? Yes, we are actually seeing attacks coming from four main fronts. Um, the first front would be espionage. There's a lot of destructive attacks already used on Ukrainian authorities um, in the form of DDoS, distributed denial of service attacks. We are seeing wiper malware being used. We are seeing multiple phishing campaigns targeting Ukrainian governments. Um, and in addition to that, we also see information operations deployed by Russian operators trying to spread misinformation about uh, crimes against humanity in the Donbass region in Ukraine. Right. And in addition to that, we also see hacktivist group um, trying to fight back for Ukraine. And they have declared so-called a war on Russian authorities. And they have already leaked information that is related to high-ranking officials in Russia itself. And lastly, of course, we also see financial criminals coming into the fray. Right? They are trying to defend the Russian authorities by claiming that they will attack whoever who goes against the Russian uh, authorities' mission to, you know, invade Ukraine. So it's 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 a multi-pronged, multi-dimensional war that we see in the cyber front as well. Mr. Lim, right from the outset, Ukraine had asked big tech companies to play a significant role uh, ahead of disinformation and uh, campaigns and so on, and and fake accounts that were appearing. Now, Facebook and Twitter, they've decided to finally remove some of these accounts that have been targeting Ukrainians. What else can tech companies do in this scenario? Honestly, nothing much, because what they are facing on that front is mostly in the domain of information operations. And in the last 48 hours, Facebook already took down more than 40 accounts that are linked to the so-called misinformation spreading campaign. And from that front, there is only so much that they can do because sometimes it, it is um, done in such a way that actual real users are the ones that are doing the spreading because they are not aware of how to differentiate between what is uh, real reality and what is fabricated. So it is actually a tough job for the platforms to enforce to make sure that you know um, 0% of uh, fake news are on their platforms because it's, it's a very tall order for them to do sometimes to differentiate between what is really uh, being reported versus what is made up. Mr Lim, I'll pick up that point. Essentially, we should not be making platforms responsible. We should be making governments, countries, mm. people responsible. For example, the US and British governments before this attack taking the unusual step of declassifying intelligence on the Russian invasion. We're seeing uh, the Ukrainian authorities, the president, the prime minister, defense ministry coming out every day very proactively, knocking and updating their information, uh, debunking uh, information from the Kremlin. In other words, they are taking the responsibility to tell their own narrative. So this is their responsibility, not tech. Right. And actually, I think a big part of the responsibility also lies with people ourselves, right? We have to know what is reality. We have to know how to cross-check information. We have to know what is a trusted source and what is the source that is dubious. And uh, it's not just on the responsibility of the government or on the platforms, but I think consumers ourselves also have to bear that responsibility in order to decide whether something is trustworthy or not. Mr Lim, that assumes that people care that a source is trustworthy. On TikTok, users have been spreading misleading videos, uh, pieces of information that are not accurate, uh, despite knowing the, you know, the authenticity uh, might be in question. 
So in a scenario where you know, you've got information, uh, you've got data or videos where uh, people don't really seem to care whether it's true or not, the, the currency of truth and, and what is fake is almost the same. How do you then persuade users of the dangers of actually sharing that fake content in a wartime situation? It's, 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 there's no easy answer to that, but I guess a very big part of that lies in education. And maybe TikTok as a platform is known to be a platform that is used mostly for leisure purposes. So people don't really take content on TikTok that seriously as compared to another platform that is known for serious content. Maybe like, um, you know, Facebook is more linked with news that are, and Facebook has a very strong stance on taking away fake news. However, TikTok might not have that policy and users of TikTok have to be aware that since you are on that platform and that platform might not have that policy of, you know, really policing information, accuracy and authenticity, um, users have to know that and they cannot just take what they see on TikTok itself for granted, right? So I, I think a big part of that lies on really education and like your previous point about how users really whether they care or not. That is also another problem that we have to tackle because sometimes if you're a teenager, this might not be so applicable to you, you know, if you're sitting in Singapore. However, if you're a teenager in Ukraine right now, this could have very severe ramifications if, if, you're, if you're fed with information that is uh, incorrect and then you make wrong decisions that could eventually lead to a matter of life and death. Mr. Lim, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. That was Yi Hao Lim, the Head of Intelligence at APAC Mandate. <laughs>